have to tell me we're live. We're not live. We are live, Josh. We are live. We're alive and we are live. Living the quarantine life. Uh, I think they have reality TV shows uh, about the quarantine life, basically where people sit in places for multiple days and don't do anything, don't go outside. So, uh, But welcome and good morning. It's good to see everyone, except for we really can't see each other. Uh, and we'll, we'll get started here in a moment. Right now, Lucy told me just to talk and give filler for a few minutes. So we're gonna talk about sports that are happening right now. Oh wait, there's nothing happening. Uh, so we can't talk about sports. Um, Easter. Easter's coming up. Uh, and uh, with the stay-at-home order, it doesn't look like we're going to get to have in-person, face-to-face church. And that's okay. Uh, but the week of Easter, uh, we're going to do some something a little different. Since there, uh, none of the kids will be able to really have Easter egg hunts, we're, we will have a... Uh, Bible verse Easter egg hunt where we will give you uh, some Bible verses each day uh, and uh, you have to go and look them up. What, a, what an amazing concept. You have to look up Bible verses. You can have your kids do it. You can do it as adults, which means you actually get to be a part of it. How exciting is that? You get to look up a scripture verse. In the Bible, something that we should always be doing, right? Um, so that, that'll be what we do, not this next week, but the next week uh, uh, going forward. And really the only thing that we will have at the church uh, here over the next few weeks uh, probably is food bank. Uh, and so don't forget about that. Let people know about it. If they need food, uh, we can get them food and we will be getting them food uh, in uh, let's see, the third Saturday of April, uh, which will seem a lot further away uh, than it typically does because we're not doing as much and we're at home a lot more and so time goes by slower because we have kids. Um, right? Yep. I told my kids to get dressed like they, like, you know, like we were, get up and like we were having church today and because we are having church today. And so I have two boys who are dressed normal and not pretty at all. And I got two girls who are dressed in dresses and ready to go. Uh, and so uh, they're, they're pretty, um, but the boys, they stink. Um, okay, we'll get started now. And we're going to be in Genesis chapter 22 this morning. Um, and uh, I, I tell you that so that you you can open your Bibles to that spot and be ready here in a few minutes when we uh, get to that. But first, let's uh, uh, let's begin with prayer. So if you'll bow with me, Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for the technology that we have today that we can uh, still come together and worship you uh, even when uh, we maybe can't actually physically gather together. Lord, thank you for the churches all across America and across the world today that are doing the same thing uh, that we're doing, either Facebook Live or they're uh, recording. Lord, thank you for letting your word go out and be heard, Lord. And we know that it won't return void, that uh, when it goes out, uh, it can change lives and it will change lives, Lord. And we ask that you you do that with us this morning, Lord, that, that not only is it heard by those who maybe don't typically come to church, but that it is heard by us who are at church often, uh, Lord, but we need a reminder of all that you do and the glory that you have for us, Lord. Lord, thank you for uh, friendships. Uh, thank you for family, Lord, uh, and thank you for your mercy. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Now, before we get to talking about the passage, I, I want to remind you that if you have prayer requests, you can always send us a message on our Facebook page. You can uh, send us, uh, uh, you can put it on the screen if you want to put it on the screen. 
Uh, but uh, uh, probably the easiest way is just a Facebook message to the church. Uh, just a few of us see that and then we can disperse it out and uh, uh, make sure that others uh, know about it and can pray for you and whatever may be going on in your life. Uh, so this morning, uh, we're going to be in Genesis chapter 22, and we're going to read verses 1 through 14 here in just a moment. Uh, but uh, this passage is about Abraham, and you've probably, you may have read it before, you may have heard about it before, uh, but Abraham was an old guy, um, well into his years at this point, uh, well over a hundred uh, and his wife Sarah was um, uh, probably in her hundreds by this point. And so you have Abraham and you have God speaking to Abraham and you have his son Isaac uh, in this story. And so let's read starting in verse 1. And I'll try and read fast enough that you don't fall asleep um, uh, for those who may have issues with that uh, like I might at some points. Uh, but starting in verse 1. Reading through verse 14, it says, <clears throat> Sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on the mountain I will show you. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and loaded his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out to the place God had told him about. On the third day, <clears throat> Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servants, Stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship, and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac, and he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them went on together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father Abraham, to his father Abraham, Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied, the fire and the wood are here, Isaac said, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. When they reached the place God had told him about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar and on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God, because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Abraham looked up, and there in the thicket he saw a ram, caught by its horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide. And to this day, it is said, on the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. Man, <clears throat> what an amazing happening in the life of Abraham, right? And, and this morning, the, the sermon title is, is God Provides the Lamb. Uh, but Abraham had been asked to leave his home, told by God, leave your home and go to a place you don't know, and he does it. And then he's told late in life, hey, you're going to have a son. He tries to, to, to do it his own way with with Hagar and Ishmael, but then God gives Sarah in her old age a son, and they name the son Isaac. And now here in this passage, God says, Abraham, and Abraham is ready. He is willing, because he says, here I, here I am. What do, you, what do you want from me, God? What do you need from me, God? He's listening to him, and he says, I want you to take your son Isaac and sacrifice him to me. What? Yeah, yeah, you heard me right. You heard me right. 
And, and we never see Abraham hesitate here, just so you know. We never see him hesitate in asking God, why, why do you want me to do this, God? He just says, okay. And he gets up the next morning, and he takes Isaac, and he takes two servants, and they get the donkey, and they get the firewood, and they get the knife, and they have rope, and they've got fire, uh, uh, to, uh, the stuff to make fire with, and they're ready to go. And they go. And this is not something where, where Abraham was able to go, okay, God, I will do that. And then immediately it happens. This is a three-day journey. Okay? Go to the place where I have told you to go and sacrifice your son there. So they get up and they leave and it's one day and they rest and they sleep. And it's two days and they rest and they sleep. And then they, you two guys, you stay here. We're going to keep going and we're going to worship and we're going to come back. And as they're going, Isaac's like, hey, uh, dad, I, I see the wood. I see the knife. See the fire. I mean, we, where's the, where's the lamb? <clears throat> where's the lamb? And in maybe one of the, one of the one of the great statements in all the Bible, Abraham says, "God will provide the lamb. God Himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son." He doesn't tell him at this point, "Hey, it's going to be you." Um, he doesn't say, I don't, I don't know. He says, God will provide the lamb. Now, if that's not faith and trust in God, I don't know what is. Okay? You're talking about going and sacrificing your son, and he asks you where the lamb is, and your response is, God will provide. And so they get there. They get there, and Isaac's got to be thinking, okay, God, you said, you said God's, God's going to provide the lamb. Then how come you're putting me on the altar? How come you're tying me up? How come you're raising your hand with the knife in it to sacrifice me? He's, he's got to be wondering what's going on. But you, you don't see that. And you don't see Abraham ever hesitate. Ever hesitate. And in the moment that his hand is raised, God stops him. An angel of the Lord says, Abraham, Abraham, don't lay a hand on him. Don't hurt him. Don't do anything to him. God will provide the lamb. And he looks over and there is the ram in the thicket caught by its horns. And Abraham and Isaac are able to sacrifice the, the ram to God. They're able to, to worship God there in that moment. What an amazing story. What a... What an incredible story of faith and one that, that we should learn from, must learn from. And also know that even in our lives today, God still provides the lamb. God has provided the lamb. What a crazy life for Abraham, right? What a crazy years. You know, he's just starting to fall and, you know, getting to know his son. His son's getting up to the age where they can go play catch with a rock. They didn't have a ball. I don't know. So I don't know what they played catch with. So uh, maybe they were out learning how to play golf. Who knows? But he's just getting to the point where they can do those things. And God says, give me your son. Give me your son. I, 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 you begin to wonder, what, what's God doing here? But God knows what he's doing. He is giving us, he's foreshadowing what he is going to do for us. Except for he's going all the way through. So let's look at a couple of things here in this passage. First off, what is a burnt offering? You got to know what this is. Now, if you want to know what it, really, what, it, what it is and read more about it, go to the book of Leviticus. Everybody d dislikes Leviticus because it's boring and it's got some weird stuff in there. But the first seven chapters give you a picture of the sacrificial system. And it may be the only paper in college that I ever got an A on. Uh, and that's a humble brag, yes. I, I did get an A on like one paper um, in college. And this is the one I really enjoyed writing and learning and studying about the sacrificial system. Because 
The burnt offering, what it is, is, is it's an offering that is done to make payment for sins in general, which means sins that we know about and sins that we don't know about. Okay? Now, what does it mean? Well, it, it's so... It is... It shows a person's devotion to God. Shows a person's devotion to God. So the offering, the, the sacrifice that they were bringing, that, that Abraham was bringing, was showing his devotion to God. So if Abraham had said, God, I know you want me to bring a burnt offering, and I know that you have said that you want me to give you my son, but... My son is pretty special to me. I mean, God, you gave me this son. I was 100 years old. Not 99. 100 years old. And Sarah was 90. This will devastate her. You want me to... God, how about, how about my best ox? A bull. Pure. How about that, God? We never see Abraham hesitate. Remember that. Remember, we never see Abraham hesitate. But God is asking him to bring his most prized possession and give it back to him. So a burnt offering is one that makes, makes atonement for sins in general, but it more importantly shows a person's devotion to God. So to begin here, God is asking Abraham to sacrifice his son, not because he wants to kill Abraham's son, but so that Abraham could show his devotion to God. Now you got to remember, Abraham has already made a covenant with God years ago. Abraham already left his homeland. Abraham has been showing his devotion to God all along, and now God says, I'm giving you something special, but I want you to give it back to me. I want you to, to give it back to to me. That'd be like somebody giving me, oh, a German chocolate cake. Let's just go, we'll go with food. I'm not, here, Chris, here's a German chocolate cake. But before you eat it, I want you to, I, I don't want you to eat it, I want you to give it back to me. Are you crazy? No, I'm gonna put some bluebell ice cream on it and eat it. The whole thing. The whole thing. They're not giving it back. Hold on. God, you want me to give up what you've given me? The life that you have given me, that you have blessed me with, the, the financial security, the stability, the, uh, the health. You want me to give everything back to you? You want me to give my kids, my children back to you? Yes. Yes, I do. Because they were mine first. All that you have was mine before it was yours. Show me your devotion to me. Show me with your actions how much you love me. I've been doing it for a long time, God said. And one of these days you'll see the greatest act of love anyone could ever do. But I want you to give your life back to me. I want you to devote it to me. So the question for us then is, what is God asking us to be willing to give up to show our devotion to him? What is, what, are, what, are, what is holding us back from completely devoting our lives to God? Is it a job? Is it school? Is it sports? Is it running? Is it our health? Is it financial security? Whatever it may be. And seriously, whatever it may be in your life, figure out what it is and write it down somewhere and then give it to God. Don't hold on to it. Pray about it. Figure out what is keeping you from being fully devoted to God that God is saying, give me that. Give it back. It wasn't yours. It's not yours. Give it back to me. And then give it to him. Write it down and pray about it so that you don't forget about it. And think about it. Know 
There is something in all of our lives that we hold on to typically. It might be our children. It might be a spouse. It might be a job. Who knows? It could be any number of things. Give it to God. Do not hold on to it. So that's, that's the burnt offering. It shows our devotion to God. It's not just about the sacrifice. And that's, 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 that's what I want to point out next, is that the test of the sacrifice for Abraham is not about what he is sacrificing. It's about his heart. It's about the heart of a person. When looking at a sacrifice and giving something back to God, it's not about what we're giving, okay? It's not about how much money. It's not about what kind of animal. It's not about how pretty an animal. It's about our heart. Now, we've got examples of this throughout the Bible. I mean, the first comes before this, Cain and Abel, right? Abel brought a sacrifice that was first fruits. It was the, the fat offering from his flocks, the firstborn of his, of his uh, flock. And Cain, it says, brought some of his fruits and vegetables. More than likely, and it doesn't specifically say what was wrong with Cain's sacrifice, but more than likely it had everything to do with his heart. That he was just bringing to bring. He was just giving to give because it was what God required. God's not so much worried about what you're giving, he's worried about your heart with it. Ananias and Sapphira, if they had said, okay, we're giving this much money, and they gave that much money, would they have dropped dead? No. But they, they lied about how much they were giving. They lied about their tithe. They lied about their offering. And so God said, it's, your heart is wrong. Your heart is deceitful. We can't have a deceitful heart. We, we, God's not worried about the, the animal or the, the vegetables or the fruit. He wants us to have a, a heart of obedience. Look in the book of Deuteronomy. He says it over and over again. I want you to have a heart of obedience that gives everything back to me. Not just one that says, I'm giving because I'm supposed to give. I want to have a heart of obedience. Micah, Micah chapter 6, verses 6 through 8 says, With what shall I come before the Lord and bow down before the exalted God? So what offering, what sacrifices shall I have? Shall I come before him with Burnt offerings with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with 10,000 rivers of olive oil? Shall I offer my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? And then it says, he has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? And he doesn't say the best of the flock. And he doesn't say you're firstborn, but he says to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. God's not looking for you to give him animals. He's not looking for you to, I mean, he wants you to give money to the church. It's part of how the church stays afloat and, and does the things that it does. But it's not about how much you give. It's about the heart that you give it with. It's it's about your heart and your attitude with which you bring your offering and your sacrifice to God. A humble heart. An obedient heart. A just heart. One that loves mercy. Not one that's self-seeking. Not one that's that's I don't care what anybody else needs. I just want to get what I can while I can and then move on. Or maybe if I bring this sacrifice, God will give me blessings. It's not about what we, we get back. It's about learning how to come to God with a heart that is humble. Abraham said, God, I know that you gave me this son but you gave him to me. 
I'm willing to give him back. Abraham's heart and his faith and his attitude about who God was in his life was displayed for three days walking towards sacrificing his son and giving it back to God. Three days. Not just a moment in time. It wasn't something that just overnight, ready to go. No, three days. What kind of heart and what kind of attitude do you bring when you bring your sacrifices to God? Don't do it mad. Not with anger. Not with sadness that we're having to give up what we're giving up. But with joy and with humility that it's God's. It was God's before it was ours and now we can give it back to him. And then God will provide the lamb. So we've had the burnt offering. We've talked about the, what really sacrifice is all about. And then we see in this passage with Abraham and Isaac, he's, Abraham says, God will provide the lamb. God is the great provider. The great provider. No one better. I can't do better. Your family can't do better. The best preacher in the world can't do better. The president of the United States can't provide more. God is the great provider. When we think of God as a provider, we typically think about hunger, our physical needs, shelter, health, job, financial security, all of those things, right? We think about God providing. Sorry, had to decline a phone call. I mentioned that to my wife earlier. What happens if you get a phone call during the middle in Facebook Live? What happens? I, I don't know. Well, you just decline it. That's what I did. Call them back later. God is the provider of all of those things. He can provide you with a job and financial security. He can provide you with, with good health. He can provide you with shelter. He can provide you with hunger and physical needs. He is really good at those things. He's proven it for thousands of years that he can provide those things. But what about when he doesn't provide those things? What about when he doesn't provide you with health? What about when he doesn't provide you with job security and financial security? What about when he doesn't provide you with shelter? What about when he doesn't provide you with enough food to feed your family? Guess what? God is still the great provider. <clears throat> he provides us with the ultimate of burnt offerings, showing us his devotion to us in the sacrifice of his son. He is the ultimate provider, the great provider. And he does that by providing the lamb. And that lamb gives us something more than we can get in food, more than we can get in health, more than we can get in shelter, more than we can get in financial security. Gives us life. It actually, if you look at John chapter 14, verse 6, he gives us the way, the truth, and the life. So the lamb, God as provider, God who provides the lamb, provides us with the way. Now, if you think about Abraham's life and providing the way, he said, go from here to there and I will bless you. And Abraham listened and followed his direction, followed his way. And in the New Testament, the disciples, God said, follow me. Follow my way. Jesus said, 
Come and follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And they did. They went. They followed his way. And for us, God has provided us a way to know him everlasting for eternity, to know him now, and to follow him now. Right now is the follow me moment for you. God is saying, I have provided the lamb who is the way. Are you going to follow me? Are you going to follow me? Abraham said, here I am. And time and time again, he listened to God and he followed the ways of God. Enoch did it. Elisha did it. Elijah did it. Isaiah, Ezekiel, Peter, Paul, John, James, all of those guys followed the way of God. It's not an easy way. It's not easy. It wasn't easy for those guys. But they followed it. Because it was provided by God. Don't follow me. Don't follow anyone in your family. Don't follow anyone in this city or this nation. Follow the way of God. His way his way is, it's, I want, it's legit. It's real. And it leads to the next word in this. It leads to truth. His way. He is the provider of the way. He is also the provider of truth. Abraham knew the truth of who God was. God made a covenant with Abraham. And that covenant had been held and was true all the way through this point in time. God told Abraham, you're going to have a son. And it became true. He had a son. God said, give me your son back. And Abraham knew that because God was true, God is truth. He had to give his son back. The disciples, they saw Jesus. They saw what he did. They saw how he treated people. And they saw truth embodied in the Lamb. They saw truth in the Christ who died on the cross. We have truth still today. How do we get it? How do we know it? It's right here. It's right here. It's in the Bible. This is truth. And how do we know it's true? Because everything that has been prophesied has come true. Because Jesus died and was raised from the dead and there is no dispute in that truth. And he said he's coming back again. Well, how do we know that's true? Right here in our hearts. Because we haven't seen it yet. But it's coming one day soon. It's coming soon. Be ready. Be ready by knowing that the God who provides the lamb, provides the way, provides the truth. And then we see that he provides life. God provides life in the land. Now I'm going to keep going back to Abraham because Abraham saw that God provided life in the, in the form of a baby boy, Isaac. And then he saw it in the sense that, that he provided Life and, and keeping Isaac alive and providing a lamb for them to sacrifice there on the mountain. But the greatest example of this for us and for the disciples was Jesus Christ on the cross. Jesus Christ on the cross. 
is the, the lamb that was slain to wash away the sins of the world. No greater sacrifice has ever been made and ever will be made. But we know that it is, and he is the lamb that gives life because he came back to life. He conquered death. Death has no hold on him. Witnesses saw him time and time again after the resurrection until he ascended into heaven. And now, how do we know? How do we know that he is the lamb that gives life? Well, if, 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 if you have ever seen a miracle, he still does those. Someone healed, someone, someone given life, someone brought back from tragedy when, when, they sh when, when you would have thought, no, it's not, not possible. What about just what he provides for you? So we're talking about God as a provider here, and, and he's providing the lamb, but we know that he is the lamb that was slain for us because he provides everything else for us. And it may not always be exactly what we want, but he provides everything we need. Jobs. Homes. Church family. Friends. Shelter. Whatever it may be. And I may have mentioned this more than once. God provides life. And he wants you to have that life. He wants you to know that life. And when I say know that life, I don't mean just knowing that there is a God. He wants you to do like Abraham did here in this passage and with your actions show your belief in God and who He is. The giver of life wants you to respond to him with your life. It can't just be words. He, he accepts our belief. But then in response, he says, follow me. The disciples, Jesus could have said, hey, follow me, guys. And they said, okay, we're going to follow you. And as Jesus walks, turns and walks away, it's not real. It's not real. It's not legit. They're not there. They don't care. But they didn't do that. They, they got up from their boats, from their jobs. They abandoned their jobs right there on the side of the sea and followed Jesus. He said, I don't have a place to sleep. I don't have food for tomorrow. But I will show you what life is. And I will give you life. We may not know what tomorrow holds. But we can believe and act on that belief in the God who provides life. not just about making a statement it's about showing our true devotion to God he has provided the lamb the lamb that was put up on that cross who was put into the tomb and then was raised from the dead God showed his devotion to you now he wants you to respond to him and he says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So this morning, you gotta, you, you gotta figure it out, right? Okay, you gotta figure out what's keeping me from being devoted to God. What 
What is my attitude and my heart saying when I bring my sacrifice to God? And then am I taking advantage of the truth that God is the provider of the lamb? That he has given me a way. He has shown me his way. That he has shown me his truth. And that he gives me life. Not, not, not happiness, but life. Life everlasting. Life eternal. Life that is a relationship with God that cannot be broken. He gives you life. How are you going to respond to that? Are you going to respond with, well, I believe in God. I know that there's a God, but... I'm not going to give up what I enjoy. I'm not giving it back to God. And if that's the, if that's the choice, then you're choosing to not follow God, not believe in God, not care about God. You're caring more about yourself. Or maybe it's a moment where you decide, okay, for so long, all I've done is believe that there is a God, but I've never really followed God. Now's the time. You can, you can pray to God and say, I believe in you, Lord. Now show me how to follow your ways. Show me what truth is. Show me what real life is. You can believe in him today. And maybe you've already accepted Christ as your Savior. Maybe you did it a long time ago. Maybe you just did it recently. But maybe you're at a point where you're like, you're holding on to things as opposed to releasing them and giving them to God. And he's saying, give them to me. Let me show you. Let me give you life abundantly. Not just life, but life abundantly. Give those things up to him. Today is the day to give those things up to him and experience the fullness of what he has to offer. We don't want, don't just, don't just experience it partially. Let's go back to German chocolate cake. That'd be like eating the cake without the icing. Don't do it. It's not as good then. It's still, still good. But why would you not want to experience the fullness of what God has to offer you? Don't just, don't, it's not the hokey pokey. Don't just put a little bit in and take it back out. Head first. Follow him. Dive into his presence. He loves you. He is the one who provided the lamb for me and for you. Do you believe in him? Have you given everything to him? Do that today. Bow with me. Lord, thank you for your word. What a precious word it is. Lord, thank you for your sacrifice, that you are the provider of life, that you have provided the lamb for us so that we can know the fullness of God. Lord, thank you for the ability to, to preach this way when we can't come together face to face. Lord, bless, bless our community here in American Falls and in the, this area of the state, Lord, protect us. Protect our families. Lord, but most importantly, let your word go out with a powerful movement right now. Let your word be heard by thousands, if not millions, who haven't heard it before and let them respond. Draw them to you, Lord. Start a revival with this moment in our country, in our world, where maybe we're, we're separated, but we're not separated from you. 
heal our land and bring it to its knees. Lord, we want to experience the fullness of who you are. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. A couple of quick announcements before we disappear into the world of no Facebook. First, thanks for joining. Thanks for watching, all that watch. Share this with your friends if you can. Share it with your family. We won't have anything at the church for the next few weeks. We will continue to go live each night when we can. It may be recorded sometimes if we've got something going on. Uh, but if we can do live, we're going to do live. Um, and we'll be back tonight. I'll, we'll let you know what time, about 30 minutes to an hour before. And, uh, and then you can join because tonight we're going to talk about my the cheating period of my life. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, it's interesting to me. It may not be interesting to anybody else. Uh, but that's the joy of Facebook Live. I can talk about whatever I want to. You don't have to watch, but it's nice if you do. Uh, have a great afternoon. Enjoy your families. Love on people. And uh, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.